I'm James Parker, and this, this is, is Florida Story. Oh, thank you so much. It's so nice. All right, for our first Florida Story, we're going to Miami, Florida. And what we have here is, stop me if you heard this before, but someone managed to bamboozle the government out of hundreds of thousands of dollars of PPP loans from all the stimulus packages that were passed after the, the COVID pandemic. And this one's a little different, though. Uh, for one, this is a 31-year-old Florida woman oh yes a woman not that women are incapable of fraud i've just noticed in these dirt bag ppp loan scams that uh, the majority of them have been perpetrated by men so uh that's one anomaly another one is not only is she a woman she's absolutely beautiful if you go google her name you can find what she looks like and even in her mug shot she's beautiful but something else about this story that i thought you'd be interested in is it follows this pattern there was a couple other of these stories i've already told you about on Florida stories where people were scamming the PPP system. One dude went out and he got a Lamborghini. Another guy went out and got a Ferrari. And this lady went out and she leased a Bentley. So a little different, you know, palette as far as expensive car tastes go. But I am baffled by these people. She managed to steal what we know of over $380,000 worth of money. And if you're going to go out and you're going to spend all this money immediately, this isn't a, a continuing income. This is like a one shot deal, you know? So even if you do want to live the fraud, who are you fooling? How long are you going to fool them for nine months, a year? You're going to run out of money. And so I don't know if we just hear about the idiots that go out and blow it on, you know, stupid things because, you know, it's a good way to get caught and be a 31 year old, beautiful woman in a Bentley. Or maybe there are a bunch of people who ripped off the PPP loan system and they're not doing all the conspicuous consumption and getting caught. And that maybe they did something smart with it because, you know, in hindsight, we, we've learned a lot from this pandemic, you know, not just necessarily about biohazards and, and epidemiology, but also if you're going to scam the government out of hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of dollars, convert some of that to cash and just hide it because these guys are going to prison for two, three, maybe seven years at the most. And, you know, once you do your time and you get out, if you package some of that money, you don't have to go back to being broke. If you're going to do a scam, do it in a way that lasts. And I think that's the that's been the big lesson from the pandemic that we should all learn. Wait. Hold my beer. What? Hold my beer. Hold my beer. Hold my beer. For our next Florida story, we're staying in the Miami area. And on this one, we're going to a little causeway. It's amazing that no matter how bad traffic you can get, if we all work together, we can get some things done in emergency situations. For example, if an ambulance or a fire truck has to come by, we can all find some way to scoot over and make way for the greater good. And I feel like there was a, a similar incentive when a plane had to make an emergency landing. Luckily, this was at night, and so there wasn't a whole lot of traffic to begin with, but uh, this plane ends up landing on the highway. And it's not as miraculous or amazing as Sully Sullenberger landing in the Hudson and saving all those lives. This is just a little private plane with a, a few people on board. And, you know, it's not going to make national news. But it's just wild. Uh, how many times have you been driving down the road and zero times have you seen a plane land in the highway in front of you, right? And uh, look, it is a rarity. And I, I guess it does happen sometimes. But look, happens in Florida. Wait, Hold my beer. What? Hold my beer. Hold my beer. Hold my beer. Hold my beer. All right, for our next Florida story, we're going to Palm Beach County. And you have seen these on the highway, even if, if you're in a small town, they don't have them. But when you go to the big cities, you see those car dealerships that have this cool elevator system where it's like six, sometimes eight story tower of cars. And they have the windows all around it. And they have a little elevator in the middle that takes the cars up and then they pull them off. And it looks so cool. You know, it looks like we're living in the year 3023 and they're all brightly lit. And it looks like a spaceship. So cool. Well, human beings make those elevators that lift the cars and anything that's in a human endeavor. Well, it is subject to failure because we are not perfect human beings. So what happens if you have a dealership that is trying to bring a car up or down and the elevator fails? Well, it just crashes to the bottom of the elevator shaft and you get some really cool video of it. And in Palm Beach County, it's a little worse than it sounds because the dealership that had the failed elevator is a Ferrari dealership. Oh, isn't that awful? It couldn't have been like a Honda Accord that fell down the shaft. It had to be a beautiful, shiny, new, amazing feat of engineering known as a Ferrari. Yes, and I mean, it's a beautiful gray color. That, look, the car is not 
in any way salvageable. Don't don't even get your hopes up if you're thinking that, oh, you know, a lot of that will just buff right out. No, it's not going to buff right out. And I listen, I know it doesn't make any sense, but I would have felt a whole lot better if that had been like a Toyota Camry that got crushed in the elevator shaft. Hold my beer. Wait, Hold my beer. What? Hold my beer. Hold my beer. Hold my beer. Hold my beer. And our last floor story is just awful. I can't believe this has happened again. We now have another Florida person. This is a Florida woman this time who's been killed by an alligator. And I, I jinxed him. I don't blame myself, but there was a guy who got killed by an alligator not too long ago. And I went and looked it up. I'm like, this is super duper rare. People almost never get killed by alligators in Florida. And I think this is like the third person I'm telling you about since I said that about a year ago. So I apologize for, for jinxing you good people of Florida. This one's extra tragic because the, the victim here is an 85-year-old Florida woman. Isn't that sad? It was a, a 10-foot alligator that uh, took her down. We have the report here from ClickOrlando.com. They're Channel 6. Yeah, witnesses say the 10-foot-long gator lunged from the water without any warning. The gator was eventually captured, but neighbors, as you can imagine, are now on edge. The St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office estimating the alligator was up to 10 feet long. How much do you think it weighed? <laughs> six, seven. Oh, easy. Easy six, 700 pounds. Yeah. All right, first off, I love how nonchalantly they're like, yeah, this is a 10-foot alligator, 700 pounds, but boy, these bites and fatalities are totally rare. Yeah, I don't care how rare they are. I got, I got a new plan for whenever I retire and I'm an 85-year-old walking my dog. I'm not going to live in a house that backs up to a habitat, to a pond that is housing 700 pound dinosaurs, human eating animals are not going to be in my backyard. I know that's a little harder to escape when you live in Florida, but you know, you should put like your, 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 your flag down somewhere. When you're looking for a new house, especially in retirement, you probably want a one story house. You don't want to be going up and down stairs, right? You probably want something that doesn't require a whole lot of maintenance. You probably want something that uh, is easily accessible. Maybe it's got like the little handicap bars by the toilet or in the shower or whatever. And here's another recommendation. How, do, how about not having a 700 pound human eating dinosaur in your backyard? That should be like one of the standard bullet points for whenever you're finding your retirement home. I'm just going to throw that out there. Hold my beer. Wait. Hold my beer. What? Hold my beer. Hold my beer. What? What is it? Florida Stories is produced by Spring Rock. Follow me on Twitter at Florida Stories J. I'm James Parker, and this is Florida Story. If someone's been turned down by a bank, maybe they just don't know that they can call you, and either you can maybe help them now or at least get them on a path to where in a year or so they can come back and make it happen. Well, one of the things we talk about all the time, James, uh, right, during the week, the free second look. There is no reason right now, the free second look, all you got to do is get with me on what you've been offered by your current lender, and let me look at it, and I'll tell you, is it good? Is it solid? Maybe you're getting a great deal from your local credit union, your bank. Who knows? Maybe you're the 1,000 or 1 millionth customer. That's fine. But you need to know you've got a source. 